160. He's gone. What's up, guys? Uh, I'm sitting here in what is going to be the next big uh, Maxworks project now that the uh, boat is done. And as you can see, I'm sitting in a golf cart. Now, I live in a suburb where there's no reason for a golf cart. Uh, I don't play golf, and in general, don't really find golf carts all that interesting, other than the fact they're like tiny little cars, which by definition makes them fun. So I have a good friend who, uh, who lives down in South Austin, and basically from his house, we walked all the bars, and uh, it's right around the corner, it's very convenient. And one day we were discussing about how much of a frustration it is to have to walk, you know, three, four blocks to just get a beer. And we realized that really the best solution to the problem would be a golf cart. So I did some looking, and for those of you who are familiar with golf carts, you know that these things can cost three, four, five, six thousand dollars. So we decided that it would be much more prudent if I just built one. And so I picked up this uh, cloak car that has a nice lift and uh, a nice roof and all kinds of other stuff. But it was actually in really, really good shape for $350. Now, some of my longer term viewers will remember that there was a monster golf cart on this channel some time ago. But the truth was that one was such a rusty piece of shit and it was so old that there was never really any opportunity to build something cool with it. And so that brings us to today. So I have a golf cart and it's cool because this golf cart actually has an aluminum frame. Uh, and a, obviously a plexiglass body or a fiberglass body. But uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a motorcycle, something that's air cooled, uh, you know, maybe a DR650 or a KLR650 or something along those lines, a big bore, single or double air cooled engine with a five or six speed manual transmission. And we're going to swap it into this bitch. And we're going to do a few things that the state of Texas requires so that we can drive this on the road as well as adding a rear bench seat to accommodate two more people and a few other odds and ends. So the plan is to basically take this golf cart, put a motorcycle drivetrain in it, and drive around downtown Austin. And if we are successful, then basically all of the hipster kids that live in downtown Austin are gonna be like, gosh darn it, why don't I have a golf cart? And uh, our names will be famous and we will be trendsetters right up until the city of Austin uh, decides to ban it. Anywho, today I just wanted to make this video to kind of introduce this new project, give you guys an idea of where we're going, some of the uh, key, key design elements, if you will. The cart must be able to travel uh, on roads that are under 35 miles an hour, which means it must be able to travel up to 35 miles an hour legally. Uh, in, in a safe manner. So that means you have to be able to turn left coming across traffic. And so we wanted something with a little bit of pickup. We played around with the idea of a Predator 212 or a Predator 420. The 420 would work, but then you have to have a separate charging circuit and there's a lot of other things that go into it. And we came to the conclusion that a motorcycle engine is the best. And instead of doing some crazy Busa cart or whatever bullshit, we wanted something that was actually tractable that we could actually use day in, day out, drive around downtown Austin without too much of a problem. Now, we're gonna end up doing a foot clutch, so there's gonna be a third pedal here uh, for the clutch, and there's gonna be a jockey shift right here that allows us to shift through the gears. Uh, other than that, we're gonna do a back seat. It's gonna incorporate four people. We're gonna remove this roof and do roll bars as well as an aftermarket roof. Um, we're obviously gonna pimp it out. It's gonna have some lights. It's gonna have some sound maybe. Uh, we'll just kind of see how the budget goes, but so far I got a really really clean golf cart for about 350 bucks So I'm very excited for this project uh, And the first big thing we got to do is we actually got to get this body off of the chassis The plan is to build an engine cradle that's going to be uh, primarily steel and we'd be able to bolt it to our aluminum chassis because obviously you can't weld steel to aluminum and I don't have a ton of experience welding aluminum, but we're going to have to weld on some brackets, some other things. So it's going to make it a lot easier if we have this chassis kind of up off the, uh, off the body. So the initial plan for today is simply to get, uh, get this body off of this chassis and so we can figure out what we're working with. Um, and I still have to buy a motorcycle. I have several motorcycle engines, 
but they're all fuel injected and they're modern and they're really not going to fit for this thing. We want something really that's pretty docile. Um, and this is just another example of, of why it's important to have design goals, right? Because you can say, oh my God, we're going to put a boost engine in a golf cart, which is fine and people have done it, but it makes the thing basically unusable because it's got way too much power and it can't be used safely. So what we're looking for is something in the 40 to 50 horsepower range I think would do really well. Um, moving around four people and, and their shit. And uh, hopefully this golf cart will eventually become a major staple in downtown Austin. So I think that's enough, uh, enough chit chat. Now I got to uh, figure out how to get this thing all the way apart. So first thing we did is we took off the roof and the useless golf shit on the back. And so now we gotta figure out how to remove the body. So it looks like there's two main pieces, uh, this front and then the back half. So I want to get everything off, so the first thing we did is we unbolted it down here from this uh, raised bumper support. So once those two bolts were removed, a little gentle yank and disconnecting the headlights and we were basically in business. So our first step here was to remove the seat, uh, set the seat mounts aside. As you can see, there's a little bit of uh, delamination in this plywood, so before we put this all back together, we'll replace the, uh, the wood on this. Well, disconnecting some brake cables, but basically all it is uh, holding this whole back piece down were these six sets of bolts right there and the two screws up front, one of which is stripped and I had to cut away. So that's basically it. We are now officially stripped down to just the frame. And as you can see, aside from a few places where uh, they obviously spilled battery acid, like right there, you can see it ate away some of the aluminum. But this whole frame is, uh, is aluminum, which is pretty cool, but probably going to be kind of a pain in the ass. Although, apparently it also seems I was wrong. There were screws here. They were just really worn down. I didn't know. Oh well. It's alright. We're going to be cutting apart this back half anyway, so it's probably not a big deal. Well, this is as far as I made it. Unfortunately, I am beat with time and rust. I was excited because it's an all aluminum frame, so I thought, hey man, we're not going to have any rust. But lo and behold, the uh, rotor part of the engine which, by the way, all the forks are, or all the forks, pff, all the brushes are trash. This whole engine's trash. This is basically just scrap at this point. So, but it's actually well, rust welded itself to the input shaft. So, put some chemistry in there. I'm going to get a, uh, a map torch tomorrow and, and see if I can't heat it up a little bit. And we just got to work that thing off because uh, it's got to come out. But this is basically where I'm going to call it a night. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, MaxWorks. Shoot me a Snapchat, MaxWorks. Facebook, MaxWorks. Uh, and make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you're new here, make sure you hit that like button. Let me know how you feel. Feel free to leave me a comment. And make sure you tune in uh, on Mondays and Fridays to watch me make an asshole of myself. Peace.